Okay, this is what we're going to be making today. A custom icon that when clicked will bring in a plane, an emissive plane that's single-sided. And it comes with a texture, a target object, and HDRI link. We can launch that browser and then go ahead and click through these and they're automatically applied. They're also applied with transparency. So you can see here, instead of being rendered onto a black plane, they are transparent, which can help in some lighting situations. Uh, if we also go into the node that automatically gets loaded, we will, you can see here, we have our temperature con controls are already added, and also uh, all of the other things, the uh, single-sided and the transparency, all that is being based off of whichever image is coming through HDRI link. Let's get started. First thing we're going to do is rebuild the light setup that I did from the other tutorial. So first thing, let's grab a plane, set it to Z+, plus, one width, one height segment, and I'm going to go ahead and add on the HDRI link tag, and I'm also going to add a target tag. I like, uh, I know this is going to be cut off on the screen, but I am adding a target tag you can see here. Uh, sometimes that's just useful to have to be able to keep your light pointed at an object and uh, Z plus will be in the, the right direction. Okay, now let's uh, create a Cycles 4D surface emission. And um, we can go ahead and change that name to Area Light. We'll drop that on to our plane. There we go. And let's open that up. This is a little uh, trick that I like to do. If you open the node editor all the way up as far as you can, this side opens up all the way. If you pull it back, it will no longer scale with the rest of it. So that annoys me a little bit. Okay, so we're going to search for an image texture. I'm going to pipe that in from the image texture. I'm going to grab this and drop it onto the HDRI link. Now that's set up, and let's go ahead and apply one of our area lights. Um, this unfortunately won't get uh, saved and remember it. Uh, you, all you have to do though is just click on HR link and launch browser, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so let's finish setting up uh, this node to uh, how we want it to be built every time that it comes in. Um, so this is good. Let's add in the um, color temperature change though. So let's grab the black body. The mix RGB. Mix RGB is going to be set to multiply. Image texture goes into the bottom, black body goes into the top, and then this gets set into the emission. Let's set this color to default to 6500. There we go. And, oops, 6500. Click out of that, uh, otherwise it stays selected, and when you go to navigate, uh, you will change the numbers. Okay, and let's go ahead and add in a mapping node and a uh, texture coordinate. Uh, this time for the texture coordinate, we're going to use the generated instead of the object. Um, and put this in. So now it's going to stay the same size, but if we did want to scale this up, uh, we can now do that through the texture node. See, what else do we want to set up on here? Ah, uh, transparency. So a few of these HDRIs have black around them. Um, oh, sorry, mix needs to be set to, uh, mix RGB, the factor needs to be set to one. There we go. Uh, they have black around them. I know you can't see that right now. Let me add a quick HDRI environment there. So you see this black around it. Uh, that for you know studio set setups, I think that's going to be fine. You're not going to really notice it, but if you are trying to mix together maybe an HDRI, that might show up in your reflections. So let's get rid of that. We're going to add a transparent node. And then a mix shader. And this is not a perfect fix, so if you don't want to do this, you can skip this step. But, okay. Now, from our light, we're going to use a color ramp. 
put our light into here. Let's solo that by clicking on color. And now let's just crush this down really far. So that's pretty good. We can get a little bit closer by dropping these uh, down, but uh, this should give off all the light information that you need. Um, but as you notice, when I pipe this in, let's invert these. There we go. Uh, so now your light will come in and have transparency. Uh, the next thing we're going to fix is that by default, these are going to be a two-sided light, which you really don't want to almost ever. It's just extra information being passed to the back of your scene. So you can skip this step if you do think it's something that you like. So we're going to take a, um, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to look at the uh, solo of the normal channel. So you can see here, this is black, the side is blue. The side we are going to want to be uh, lighting from is the, let's see, uh, let's drop in on a cube and have our light target it, just whatever its default is. Okay, so the blue side is what's going to target it. So that's the side that we're going to want to make sure that's our the side that light is visible on. Okay, so our normal right now is blue is there and black is here. I'm going to do a color ramp. And pipe that in, solo that. And again, just crush this down so that side is fully white and the other side should be black. Okay. Now over here, we're going to make another mix RGB. Like this. And our uh, multiplied color one is going to go into the base. It's going to be still set to multiply, factor still of one, but now our color is going to be our black and white gradient of our normal map is going to be multiplied over top, which will make the backside of this black. Okay, so let's get out of the solo. So now we have our gold light facing us. But if we go around to the, oops, might help if I connected them. Pipe this into our emission now. There we go. So now we have our gold light on this side and this side will be emitting nothing because it is black. Um, you do notice the holes in there from the transparency. I don't think that's gonna really cause an issue because it that is so dark that it's probably not pushing out any light anyway and it should look the exact same in the reflections. But again, that is up to you. So I think this is pretty well set up to use. So we really want this to happen every single time we add an area light. So next thing we're gonna do is rename this to our area light. And I'm gonna put this inside of a null. We can uh, delete this environment for now. I'm gonna put this inside of a null and let's see if we're, that's fine. Um, our null, we're going to call what our plugin is going to be called, which I'm calling mine uh, cycles for D and then ALM for area light map. Okay, so then we're going to go into our content browser. We're going to go file, new preset library, and we're also going to call this cycles for D ALM. And then we're just going to drag in this null into our content browser. So now that can be easily loaded up. Now that's what our Python script is going to point at. So now let's hop over to Sublime and try to make this work. This section we're probably going to go through pretty quickly because I'm not going to be the best at explaining this. Uh, I've kind of taken somebody else's um, script and then modified it a little bit to make what I was hoping would work and it did. So here it is. I will copy this and paste it in the description and uh, feel free to reach out if it's uh, not working for you and I can actually just try to send you over this uh, dot python. So I'm using sublime text here. Um, 
and this is written in Python. So after you, you can, should be able to just paste this into Sublime and then go to File, um, Save As, and just save it as a .py for Python. Um, where you're going to save that is going to be in your um, on your C drive, uh, your user under app data, roaming, maxon, whatever version of Cinema 4D you're in, go to library, scripts, and you're gonna create a new folder. And I called that one Cycles 4D space capital A-L-M. So I named my Python script the exact same thing, Cycles 4D A-L-M uh, with no spaces. And so that lives in here. And then I created a little icon, uh, 32 by 32, uh, and it's a TIFF. It's also named the exact same thing. I just used the icons that I just searched for them in my other library folders uh, and combined the uh, HDRI link image here and the cycles light. Okay, I have restarted Cinema 4D and uh, the script is applied. We've saved the preset in the content browser. Uh, now I'm going to add that shortcut in, uh, that icon will show up. So you can search for it, type in Cycles 4D ALM, you can see it here. But we want to, don't want to do that, we want to go to Window, Customization, Customize Palettes, and we're going to type here, Cycles 4D ALM. So just click and drag that, you can see my uh, top bar is uh, rather full, that's because I'm using a tutorial view and I never work this small. So, okay, so now that's added and I could just save this as a default layout and actually let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll save this as my Cycles 4D tutorial layout. And save. Okay, so now we should just be able to click this button, the Cycles 4D and we've brought in a plane. You can see it's loading up here. When it has on there, it has our uh, texture, which got brought down here, our area light texture. It has our target object. It has our, an HDRI link. So it's always gonna come in pink initially, but it is still linked. If you notice, it even has it, the image still referenced here, the last one that, uh, that we saved it with. But all we need to do is just click on HDRI link, launch browser, and go to your area lights. And now you have a button to quickly add in these area lights into Cycles 4D. Uh, I actually earlier today was doing a car render and used this exact same setup except was using some of the other HDRI kits. Um, be, you end up sometimes with some funny looking um, setups to get the right reflections in cars, but uh, yeah, you can also just apply these and they're gonna work the same as your uh, area lights. Probably shouldn't have the uh, trans transparency on these though. Uh, anyway, you can use that technique uh, with the Python script. Uh, just point it to another item in your content browser that you add there, create a custom button, and you can have it bring in whatever you'd like. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys later.